Hey everybody, welcome back to Pediatric Therapy Essentials. My name is Dr. Heather Sossaman and I'm a pediatric physical therapist. Well in this week's video I have some more Dollar Tree favorites for you, so stick around! everybody and welcome back. Well as I said this week I've got some more of my favorite Dollar Tree products to share with you. And if you missed my first video on Dollar Tree favorites I will link it right up above. Well let's dive right in. My first product is painter's tape. Now I've had duct tape at my Dollar Tree for quite some time but painter's tape is relatively new. And what I love about painter's tape is that it's easily removable from whatever surface you put it on. So if you put it on the floor or the wall, it will come off easily and it shouldn't, shouldn't is the keyword, damage the surface underneath. So I use painter's tape for lots of things. First and foremost, I use it to mark lines on the floor. So if I'm working on walking heel toe or learning how to walk on a straight line, painter's tape is a great option that I use before I move on to something more complex like a balance beam. And the cool thing about painter's tape is you can do more than make just a straight line. You can make zigzags and curves and whatever kind of fun shapes and courses you'd like to create. Second, you can create a ladder course out of painter's tape. So a lot of us are familiar with those exercise ladders that um, athletes and kids use to walk through, jump through, and do all kinds of coordination type activities. Well, as a child's learning those skills, the ladder itself can kind of cause them to trip if they're not really good at things yet. So painter's tape is a great place to start. And it's also a heck of a lot cheaper than one of those ladders. So you can simply put strips along the floor and have kids jump, step, hop, uh, walk, backwards walk, sidestep, all kinds of things through the ladder. And just like you can use painter's tape to create patterns on the floor, you can also use it to create patterns on the wall. So if you'd like a child to trace a giant letter A or a figure eight, you can put it on the wall with painter's tape and they can use their finger to go over it. If you're working on reaching, you can put different letters maybe written on the tape. So try to touch letter A, try to touch letter B to get them moving their arm more and more. And as I showed in one of my last videos, you can also use painter's tape to create a sticky surface on the wall for kids to attach things to. So if I'm working on reaching overhead, I can take a piece of painter's tape, and this is the sticky side, but I'm going to bend it around so that part of the sticky side is against the wall and stretch it out as long as I want to and attach the other side the same way. Now I have this length of sticky that's sticking out for kids to access. So if I want to put cotton balls on the floor, they can grab them, reach up, and maybe the goal is to get them to go up on their toes. They can go up on their toes and attach the cotton to the sticky tape. You can use pieces of paper or any other lightweight items that you think the tape can handle. And we've talked lots in the past about creating targets on the wall for throwing. So we've put plain pieces of paper, we've talked about color circles on the wall that you can use for targets, but painter's tape will work just as well. So you can create small lines or the letter X in different places on the wall and have the child throw the ball at it. If you'd like to make it a little more difficult and work on sequencing, you can draw letters, numbers, or shapes on the tape and call out, throw the ball at number one, throw the ball at number three, and encourage them to go to different locations on the wall. The best thing about it is when you're done, you simply remove the tape and your ticket is all taken care of. Okay, you guys, I really tried to do a Dollar Tree video without mentioning pool noodles, but I just couldn't help myself. So next on my list is the pool noodle. And you guys know I love pool noodles. I did an entire video about pool noodles, which I will link up here, but I have a few new ideas for you today. The first one is to create beads for stringing from pool noodles. So you can take your pool noodle and cut it down into smaller pieces and create these nice little beads for stringing. And you can put them on string, you can put them on a dowel, but they're a little bit easier to handle for kids with more fine motor control issues, and you can cut them into any specific shape you like. So at one of my schools, we've taken this pool noodle bead thing to the next level, and we've created little slits in the beads after we cut them. So they look like this. 
And this works great for overhead reach. So I have a couple of kids that are really trying to work on going up on their toes and reaching items on the top shelf, like for work overhead. And they were trying this with the clothespins, which is what I usually use to do this activity, but their fine motor skills just weren't quite there yet and the clothespin was getting in the way. So the OT suggested that we take one of these little beads and cut a slit in it so we could just slide it up on the line and the child could pull it off. So we're getting that motion of reaching up overhead without having to mess with the difficult clothespin. And last on my list for pool noodles is to create an adapted card holder. So playing card games is super fun for kids, but it can be really difficult sometimes to manage all those cards in your hand while you're trying to pull new ones out and put some in. So we use adaptive card holders for that. And you can absolutely buy them off Amazon. I will leave a link to my favorites in the description box below. But sometimes you don't have the money or the time to do that. So a pool noodle will work in a pinch to create a card holder that works just as well. So next on my list is ping pong balls. And these again are also pretty new to my Dollar Tree and I'm very excited because there's so many fun things you can do with ping pong balls. So if you put a ping pong ball on a table and give a child a straw, you can have them practice blowing the ball across the table or across the floor. This works great on improving breast support and oral motor control. You can also use ping pong balls to play like a modified version of air hockey. So if you get two plastic cups and a ping pong ball, you can slide the ball across the table and your partner can catch it with their cup. Then they can use their cup to push it back across the table to you and you can go back and forth. You can also use the cup like a catcher's mitt and throw the ping pong ball and have a child try to catch it with the cup or even bounce it off the table and have a child try to catch it with the cup. Ping pong balls are also a great way to work on unilateral stance. So we've talked about using cones and cups to turn upside down and then place items on top to kick off with one foot. And ping pong balls are another great thing you can put on top of the cones and have a child try to kick off. And finally, just like we use cotton balls to do a modified spoon and egg race, you can use ping pong balls the same way. So have a child place the ping pong ball on a large spoon and carry it around the house or around the clinic without letting it fall off. It's a great way to work on balance and coordination. So last on my list is party platters and they're small containers. So the plastic clear containers are great for sorting. I use them to sort things by color and I've also used them to sort money. So for color, I would mark each section of the container as red, yellow, blue, green, and give the child something to sort by color. Now, because I'm a PT, most likely before they sort the item, I'm making them reach or squat in some way to come get it, but this is a great way to add sequencing and sorting skills to a physical activity. You can also use it to sort by money. So for our older kids that are working on life skills, we use this container to sort pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters in much the same way. You just put a picture of the item that goes in each section on the clear container and then the kids can sort. Now these smaller bins that are used for like sorting pencils and things in your desk, I use to sort silverware. So I have a few kids that are really trying to learn how to sort silverware, but they have some movement limitations that are getting in the way. So the smaller standardized silverware sorters that you would find in most people's homes are a little difficult for them to get the silverware in. So I use these larger containers and then I put an image of the item that they're supposed to put in each container. So I might put an image of a fork, a spoon, or a knife, and then give them plastic silverware to sort. The beauty of this system as well is that I can create any kind of color contrast I need to to accommodate for visual deficits. Okay guys, well I hope you enjoyed my Dollar Tree favorites this week. If you have some more, please leave them in the comments below. You guys left me a few great ideas last time and I have been using them and absolutely love them, so thank you. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with someone else that you think might enjoy it. If you're new around here and you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on those notifications so you know when my new videos are out. I have a few other videos about how to use Dollar Tree products and even free things around the house in your therapy and activity sessions, so I will link those videos in the description box below. As always, if you'd like any more information, please be sure to pop over to my website, pediatrictherapyessentials.com, and check out the blog posts, materials, and videos that I have for you there. Well, I hope each and every one of you has a wonderful week, and I will look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Bye!